Attention shoppers, tonight on The Checkout. Jules checks out our consumer rights when returning goods. Kirsten shows how to give restaurants their just desserts. And Craig goes biblical on salty cereals. Oh, too late. But first, Julian Morrow to the returns counter. Do you know what your rights are? You have the right to remain silent. One of the advantages of being arrested, anything you say can and will be used against you, is that the police have to read you your rights. You understand? Yes. But as a consumer, no one reads you your rights, and many shoppers are left with the wrong impression. Signs like this, for example. Or this, or this, or this. They're bullshit and they're illegal. Warning, consumer law does not give you the right to deface signs, even if they're bullshit. Point is, it doesn't matter what the dodgy sign says. It doesn't matter what the dodgy fine print you're never gonna read says. And it doesn't matter what the dodgy sales assistant says. Wait! It's true. If you buy goods in Australia, you've got rights under the Australian consumer law. And those rights are exactly the same, whether you buy from a big chain store, a small retailer, a second-hand store, or even an op shop. But they don't apply to private sales. So you're OK, Harvey. It's Norman. You can read yourself your rights at consumerlaw.gov.au. Now, I'm the kind of guy who loves doing that. But if you're not, here are the basics about returning goods in Australia. You have the right to return a product if it's not as described. And that's as described on the packet or by the person who sold it to you. You have the right to return something if it's not fit for its purpose. And that includes the usual purpose, but also if you conveyed a different purpose to the f**kwit who sold the product to you and it's not fit for that purpose, you can return it then too. You also have the right to return a product if it's not of acceptable quality. Now, what's acceptable quality? This is where it gets interesting. What's acceptable quality isn't about here. It's about you, the consumer. What do you think is acceptable? Actually, it's not about you. It's about what the reasonable consumer, fully acquainted with the goods, would regard as acceptable. Do you mind? Anyway. A product is only acceptable if it looks OK, if it's safe, and if it's durable. What durable means depends on the sort of product it is. There are lots of products, fridges, freezers, washing machines, that we keep for a long time. And for them, reasonable durability should be measured in years, even decades, not weeks or months. For example, you'd expect a candlestick like this to last for many years. So if it fell apart after, say, two years, you can still return it. You've really let yourself go. You can't return this without the original packaging. That's wrong. The consumer law says you don't need the original packaging to return something. Yeah, well, you don't have the receipt. <laughs> well, I don't need the receipt. I'm right, you know. There's no law that says you need a receipt. You just need to be able to prove your purchase. And there's plenty of ways of doing that, whether it's credit card records, product serial numbers, or maybe even social media. <laughs> and just say that somebody's being difficult. Remember, it's the consumer's choice where you take things back. You can return them to the manufacturer if you want, but you can also return it to whoever you bought it from. The store can't fob you off to the manufacturer and they can't charge you for it either. In fact, even saying there's a fee is illegal. 
You could go to jail, Joe. Actually, it's just a fine. Shh. Even better, if you get something as a gift, you've got exactly the same consumer rights as if you purchased it yourself. So long as you can show where it was bought, you can return your gift without a receipt, even without the original packaging. Now, there are some limits in the consumer law to spoil your fun. You don't have the right to return goods if an unreasonable amount of time has passed. And you don't have the right to return goods if you damage them yourself. Ah! And most disappointingly of all, you don't have a clear right to exchange goods or get a refund if you've just changed your mind unless the shop's policy allows it. And some retailers will even do it out of the goodness of their heart. So it's always worth asking. But back to the cool stuff in the consumer law. If you're returning something and you think it's so unacceptable that you wouldn't have bought it in the first place, then it's your choice, not the store's, whether you get a refund or a replacement. Provided you're a reasonable person. Would you shut up? That's not very reasonable. As well as your money back, you've also got a right to compensation for any reasonably foreseeable loss. And that compensation can include the cost of transport for returning the goods. Yeah, I know, reasonable cost. And if the cost of returning it's significant, which it could be for something like a fridge, then the supplier's got to collect it at their expense. But remember, if the problem isn't a major one, it's the seller's choice whether to refund or exchange. So you're at their mercy. And one last cool thing. Under the consumer law, any statement made by a product manufacturer or supplier when they're trying to sell it to you constitutes an explicit guarantee. So when you're shopping, you've got rights, and anything they say can and will be held against them. Getting faulty products and bad service can be annoying. Sometimes it's tempting to lash out. Up you get. But the consumer law is there to protect you and you have the right not to remain silent. Shitty service is annoying, but it's not giving you the right to commit murder. Allegedly. <laughs> the Bible says, as Lot and his wife fled from Sodom and Gomorrah, his wife turned back and God turned her into a pillar of salt. Darling. But recent studies suggest the real reason Lot's wife turned into a pillar of salt was that as a child she ate Kellogg's Crispix with a stunning 725 milligrams of sodium in every 100 grams. To put that in context, there's more salt in that bowl of cereal than there is in this packet of chips. Here you go, doll. Oh, too late. We often focus on the sugar in kids' cereal, but sodium, which we normally get from salt, can also be a big problem and can lead to heart disease later in life. Stop it! Why you can you? find low sodium alternatives on the checkout website. Better. One of those low sodium alternatives is Wheat Bix for Kids. And normally when I see a for kids, I'm immediately skeptical. Wow, they're growing apples especially for kids now. But in this case, there is a difference. The sodium content has been massively reduced. Yay! But there is a catch. Aww. I'm not quite sure how Sanitarium are removing the sodium from their cereal. I found a bit! But they want to charge you a lot more for it. Kids' Wheat Bix is more expensive than the regular salty one. And because you can't buy the low sodium ones in bulk, the real cost difference is far higher. So while companies like Sanitarium should be congratulated for putting out a healthier option, maybe they shouldn't be price gouging on that healthier option as well. Come on, Sanitarium. Do it for the kids. Dear Sea Life Aquarium, 
Earlier today, I had a most educational visit to your premises. As you promised, I did indeed discover some amazing facts along the way. The most amazing fact I discovered was at your Aqua Snacks Cafe, where the price of an Aqua Snack is $3.80. While, like most, I am accustomed to paying for a liquid which is available more or less for free from taps everywhere, for some reason your price seemed particularly ridiculous. Perhaps it had something to do with being surrounded by water. According to your website, six million litres of it. I couldn't help thinking. I do hope Sea Life Aquarium didn't have to pay Sea Life Aquarium prices for all that water. Because according to my calculations, it would have cost $36 million, a prohibitive amount, even with a staff discount. Visiting Aqua Snacks at least explains why freshwater fish are the most endangered group of animals on the planet. At your prices, their habitat is so expensive, I'm amazed they're not entirely extinct. But I do give you credit for one thing. There can be no doubting Sea Life Aquarium's claim to have the world's largest variety of sharks. It's just a shame that so many of them are behind your cash registers. Warren Oliver, 58. P.S. Your claim to have two of only five dugongs on display anywhere in the world needs to be amended to one dugong. He's safe. For now, you'll move sea life. We appreciate your complaints here at the checkout, but there's no need for Warren to get too angry about the price of water at the aquarium, not just because he's a made-up person, but also because we're confident there are other places where water is even more ridiculously overpriced, and we want your help to find them, which is why we've launched H2OMG, the search for Australia's most expensive bottled water. So if you see water being sold for a crazy price, take a photo of it, tweet it with the hashtag most expensive, put it on the Checkout TV Facebook page or send us an email at tipoff at thecheckout.net.au. If you come across any other top-notch rip-offs along the way, send them through too. Guilty mum, I want my child to be healthy. That's why I need to protect him against every microbe. That's why I buy pastilles. They've got all the vegetables and vitamins that my child needs for healthy development. Vegetables like these. And no girl vitamins for my little angel. He deserves boy vitamins. They're exactly the same as multivitamins for girls, but with cars. And to be fully armed in the fight against normal coughs and colds, I'll need this, 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 and this. They're so mild, they hardly do anything at all. So you can never have too many of them. I just wish there was a product that stopped kids from catching colds in the first place. There is no product that will stop your child catching colds. Vitamins and supplements are a waste of money. Perfect. This supports the immune system from mild infections such as cold and flu. Which supports the fact that you don't know what you're talking about, Dr James Best. That takes care of coughs and colds. And now I can protect him from everything else, thanks to Immunocare. Toddler formula fills the gaps in children's diets that... ..don't really exist if your child's eating normally. Children 12 months of age do not need formula anymore. Immunocare is really unnecessary. And it's also rich in immunonutrients, which I just find so immunoreassuring. And to boost my toddler's defence system, I need Bifidus. It's full of BS. And this is the perfect mix of science and love. Oh. Oh, shush. Best of all, I can now keep my child healthy from one to two, two to three, three to ten, all without solids. Liquid health all the way to adulthood. It's just what mother wants. Today I'm going to compare the Tesla Roadster 
to the Holden Commodore SV6. Like I'm on Top Gear. Ah, uh, Craig, you're meant to compare their carbon footprint. Carbon footprint? Ah, oh, damn. Sorry, Stig. I mean, Stib. That's going to fool the lawyers. So which car has the better carbon footprint? Well, this is a fully electric car with all the latest technology. And this is a good old-fashioned Aussie V6 petrol sports car. So the answer is obviously, it depends. The engine in this electric car produces zero carbon emissions. Whereas the petrol-driven Commodore produces heaps. But electric cars need to be recharged. And where does that charge come from? If you're in Victoria and you charge your car from the grid, then our Tesla will have a higher carbon footprint than a Commodore. However, if you recharge from the grid in Tasmania, our electric car smashes the Commodore. The difference is where the power comes from. In Tasmania, 87% of electricity comes from renewable resources, like hydropower. Whereas in Victoria, 92% of power comes from brown coal, making it the dirtiest energy in the country. Even the tiny electric Mitsubishi IMEF, if charged on Victoria's power grid, is responsible for more carbon dioxide than your average small petrol car. But that only goes for Victoria. In every other state, the electric car is ahead of the petrol alternative. So does that mean you shouldn't drive an electric car if you're a hipster from Melbourne? Melbs. Melbs. Not quite. In every state of Australia, you can now pay extra to get your energy from sustainable sources. Meaning with an electric car, you can reduce your carbon footprint to practically zero. Even in Melbs. So when companies like Nissan say, no more CO2 emissions, they aren't quite lying, but it does depend. If there were more electric cars on the road, it could be good for our environment. But why aren't there? One of the first reasons is cost. Electric cars and hybrids tend to be more expensive than others. Another reason, and perhaps more important, is something called range anxiety. The worry that you'll run out of power and be stranded somewhere with nowhere to charge. Electric cars that have been sold in Australia have a range of between 70 right up to 390 kilometres. Although the range is less if you use your air conditioning or go up a hill or let a guy pretending to be the Stig drive. It's not that petrol cars don't run out, it's just that we have over 8,000 petrol stations to refuel if we start to run low. Whereas if you run out of charge away from home, there are currently only 100 charge stations in the whole country. We can just make it to Canberra. <sighs> to overcome the problem of range anxiety, Holden's just released a new car. The Volt, which operates as a normal electric car for about 70 kilometres, which will cover most people's daily drive. But if you run out of charge, a small petrol engine kicks in. It doesn't actually run the car, but it charges the battery so you can keep going. It's kind of like running your solar power on a cloudy day with a small coal-fired sun. It means you lose your emission-free drive, but it does mean you can drive long distances if you need to. It's a step forward while still being anchored in the past. But if you want to know what the future looks like, According to Toyota, we'll all be driving widescreen TVs down the street, dancing and laughing like idiots, and posting annoying Facebook updates to our car doors.
Electric cars might not be oversized phones yet, and they still got a way to go. But can they fulfill the major role of a car? Compensating for my tiny penis. Sure, Steve. Except in my pants! Our special tonight is Pacific Ocean Black Cod Fillet, delicately balanced on a sumptuous organic pearl barley risotto. Long descriptions and big words create the impression that a dish requires a lot of effort and skill. And a 36-month aged Yamon Iberico topped with twice-cooked Heidi Farm aged Gruyere, then nestled in between two thick-cut slices of organic Sonoma sourdough rye miche with caramelised dark crust. Priming you to pay more for what is essentially a ham and cheese sandwich. And the University of Michigan found that fancy, hard-to-read fonts can make meal preparation seem 65% more complicated. Solution. Simply reformat the menu with a brief summary of each item in Comic Sans font. <laughs> Leaving the dollar sign and decimal places off a price makes it seem like less, meaning customers spend up to 10% more. I love the duck, thanks. Solution. Remind yourself that these are indeed dollars. Christ, that's $32. The lobster and champagne isn't on the menu because they think you'll buy it. Oh, wouldn't the lobster be extravagant? It's there to make everything else seem reasonable in comparison. Actually, I think I'll be sensible and just stick with the rack of lamb. This is known as the decoy product strategy, and it works. Solution. Make all the food seem expensive in comparison by bringing your grandfather along with you. When I was a boy, that lobster cost $2.24. Lamb, lamb was a shiny shilling. And I had to walk 15 miles to school. <laughs> Solicitor, Consumer Credit Legal Centre, New South Wales. If I could say one thing, it would be don't get your car loan from the same place you buy your car without looking at other loan options first. It's easy to get caught up in the excitement of buying a car, but it'll cost you lots more if you don't get the right loan. I've seen dealer arranged finance with interest of up to 48% per year, which can add thousands to the loan. If it's worth shopping around for your car, it's worth doing the same for your loan. If you are misled or treated unfairly, get free legal advice by contacting your community legal centre or legal aid. Need a quick snack with all the saturated fat of two rashes of bacon, two eggs and a fried tomato, but none of the flavour? Sunbright muesli bars with more calories than a Mars bar and more fat than a fry-up, it's, um, the wholesome-ish hunger buster. Most muesli slices are well over 1,000 kilojoules and I'm only talking this fast because of the sugar rush from that muesli slice. uploading more and more gripes to our social media complaint segment, F YouTube, like this one from Helen W. Some group of smart Alex at the ABC have stolen my shtick and they don't even do it very well. It's full of tacky gimmicks and fake cameos. And not really a consumer issue, Helen, but thanks anyway. On the other hand, this viewer's concern was both clear and succinct. Once when I was in the city, people were handing out free packets of chips and I took one and it had three chips in it. Scam. We're not sure exactly who the culprit was there, Eddie, but all hand outers of free chips in miserly quantities should be ashamed. It's a scam. We also heard from David Thomas about some dodgy signage at Woolworth service stations. The main sign said Vortex Diesel. 
So Vortex is diesel, aha. The pump never said this is petrol, you fool. Now I'm stuck and they claim it's my fault. He's not the only one to make that mistake. According to his roadside assist mechanic... This happens every day. It's so easily avoided if Woolworths made changes. Good point, David. Woolworths, fix up your feng shui. Scam. Finally tonight, someone who's really put the F.U. into his tube is Jack Yakovich. Jack's an avid gamer, which is why he... I invested in a pair of Turtle Beaches Air Force PX-21s. I mean, with amplified sound, stereo expansion, dual volume control and chat boost, how could I go wrong? Jack's epic new headset arrived and... The rock. The block the rock. Again, these stupid headsets are playing up. Up there, look out for the rock. Oh, shit. Oh, After just a few weeks of use. But as players of violent video games go, Jack's a cheery optimist, so he thought... No dramas, I'll take them back to the Oz game shop where I got them from. ..who were no help at all. So Jack turned to the manufacturer. Cos the flyer that come with the headset says there's no need to go back to the shop as we can help. Yeah, bullsh**. Yes, can. This is where we get to the real issue. And it's not that Jack likes wearing neckerchiefs. After establishing the headsets were stuffed through no fault of my own, Turtle Beach support then almost flippantly asked if I'd purchase the headsets through an authorised dealer. Well, f if I know. Who asks a shop if they're an authorised dealer when you're buying something? No one that I know. No one we know either. By the way, Jack, you should follow up with ozgameshop.com. As Jules said... Remember, it's the consumer's choice where you take things back. You can return them to the manufacturer if you want, but you can also take them back to where you bought them. By the way, there's no authorised dealer exception to the Australian consumer law. Both the seller and the maker are legally obliged to replace the faulty gear. And if you're watching Oz Game Shop or Turtle Beach, you should give Jack his money back. For starters, that's his legal right. And more importantly, he's about this far from going postal. Let us know how you go, Jack, but for now, we'll give you the last word. Turtle Beach headsets really do suck. And if you've a gripe to share, upload a video at futube.net.au because there's nothing we love more here at The Checkout than exposing a good old... Scam. Yeah.